Hi guys, how are you today? My name is Bailey Sarian and today is Saturday. <laughs> if you're new here, hi. So I wanted to film a favorites video, like a 2019 favorites video, but I hate favorites videos. I'm sorry, I know, unless it's Oprah, I don't know. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Oprah did me dirty, liar. Last Saturday, I told you guys about this notebook I have, my secret handy dandy notebook. <laughs> my teeth are yellow. I've been drinking a lot of soda lately, like it's good for me or something. God help me, 2020, do me better. Notebook, notebook, notebook. I've been using this. I use this mainly for my Monday videos. When I'm doing my makeup, I always pause. I write down what product I used. So I went down here and was just like, I what was I consistently using over and over and over again? And bitch, I am, <laughs> I am using something different every single time which made this very difficult. And then I was just trying to think of what I like minus this notebook. And I was just drawing blanks. I know, I don't like favorite videos. They used to be fun. Then the market just became so oversaturated, oversaturated and there's something new every single effing day that it makes it hard to like be happy with what you have. Cause you always feel like you need the latest and greatest. Oh God. Anyhow, so. I'm gonna do my makeup and I'm gonna talk about some of the products that I used consistently throughout 2019. And I'm also gonna be just talking about why I like it, applying it on my face as well. We'll see where, where we go with this, but things that I know for sure, okay? So the first um, thing I'm gonna do is start with my skin. Um, one of the products that I used a lot was this one, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, shade number two, light. Claire. Now, a lot of people will wear this alone or wear it with a foundation, underneath the foundation, or even on top of a foundation for an all over glow. I was using this a lot when my skin cleared up. My skin has cleared up, but this year, <laughs> this year, my skin was not uh -uh, in August. It happened in August. My skin just went to shit. And after that, I've been leaning more towards matte foundations because if you have acne or acne prone skin, matte foundation doesn't enhance texture. It smooths everything out. If you don't have acne prone skin or you have flawless skin, and I don't mean that in a rude and shady way, I'm trying to find a brush and I'm like, spazzing out. Acne prone or texture on your skin isn't an issue, then this product's nice because it does give you a pretty glow and you can get away with just wearing it as is. Like you don't even need a foundation because it really just gives this beautiful luminosity. Yeah, so I haven't used it since about August because my skin was just not, not into it and I was going for a more smooth matte look, but it is such a beautiful foundation. I recently saw that What's Her Name? What's her name, you guys? What's her name? What's her name? Christy Romano. She was on Even Stevens and stuff. She started her own YouTube channel. So I've been like stalking her over there. I mean, following her. She uses this product. Well, to be fair, she did a makeup tutorial and it wasn't the greatest. It really wasn't. Oh, I feel so bad saying that. She's still so beautiful. <laughs> It just wasn't the greatest, but it was real. You know, it was real. Moving on, Bailey, move the fuck on. Foundations, now foundations. I was really all over the place, but I noticed the consistency with these three foundations, okay? First and foremost, the Chanel foundation. Chanel Ultra Le Tient. Okay, that's in French. Ultra Wear All Day Comfort Flawless Finish Foundation. I have the shade BD20. Now this foundation, I was, I was really loving it. And the reason I stopped using it is because I noticed that the color's off. It pulls more pink on me. It was in the videos where I was using this, you could see there's a difference in my face. It's like, ooh, pink. But I love the finish of this foundation. It's great if you want more of a matte finish, but also if you have dry skin and maybe you just want a matte look, this is great. Because when I was really, really dry, I remember I was flaking around my chin area, this product didn't enhance or dry out my skin or show any texture on my face. It really just smoothed everything out and made it look flawless. And I love this. Another foundation I really liked is this one, the Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage Foundation, bitch. I have color 2.12 and this will give you full coverage 
a tiny bit goes such a long way and it has um, more of a matte finish to it as well. This one I noticed when I'm really dry, it doesn't work. Whereas this one, if I am dry, it works regardless. This one is good for if I know it's gonna be a long ass day, I'm not gonna be able to touch up. I'm probably gonna get shiny this one, okay? And then also the CYO foundation. This one I heard is being discontinued. That's probably why it was on sale when I picked it up. It's a long lasting foundation. It gives such a beautiful coverage. It was like, how much was this? I think it was under $10. It's so great. I have the shade uh, 107. I'm gonna use this one today. It gives you such a flawless finish. So another favorite product of mine is the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel Bronzing Makeup Base. This I used a lot. I use this a lot off camera as well. Um, I haven't used it in my videos as of lately because I'm not sure. So this one is such an interesting product. I've tried many dupes many dupes and have not found a winner. Now, if you go into store and you see this and you swatch it and you put it on, you're gonna be like, what the hell is this? Like it's garbage. Uh, but when you put it on, it's just like this light warmth to the face that you can build so it can be more intense, but it just looks beautiful. I love it. I like to apply like along the forehead. Now I've tried a couple of dupes. There was one by Sonia Kashuk, which is drugstore. You could get it at Target. I went looking for it and had no luck. Turned out the product that I was looking for was discontinued. So then I went and got a product from Mally. Mally Beauty? You know Mally's, right? Um, you don't really see much. I never see anybody using the products, but they're still there in Ulta. Now there's this like bronzer that was highly recommended as a dupe for this one, but it was nothing like this one. So I was confused. I just have yet to find a product similar to this with the lower price point because this one is obviously Chanel. So they're gonna be bitches and they're gonna charge you, I think it's like $60 for this which is absolutely insane, but, cause there's always a but. The last one I got lasted me like <laughs> way too long, like five years. You don't go through it quick. So I just really enjoy this product on my face. So when it came to concealer, that's where I really had a problem because I'm sure some of you are quite aware that concealer is my vice. No, no, no. Is it? No have this sick obsession with concealer. I don't know what it is, but it's just the way it is, okay? Cool, I'm glad we had this talk. So this year, um, I used the Jouer High Coverage Concealer like nonstop. This one is almost empty. I took off the stopper on the top of it to just get out every little drip drop that I could. Took me by surprise. Like, I really like this one. I also use Tarte Shape Tape a lot. This one, the Tarte Shape Tape was like a ride or die for a minute. And then this one came up and I was like, mm, wait a minute. I noticed if you were more dry, you try this one, it can really enhance all the texture underneath your eyes. It can make you look even more dry. Whereas this one, when I was feeling really dry, it still gave me the coverage that the Tarte Shape Tape did, but this one didn't make me look really dry. Um, another favorite is, this is when it gets kind of tricky because the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. No, what's it called? What's the Too Faced Concealer called? Cause I use that one a lot, but I use that for my foundation. The shade Vanilla, empty. I scraped it out. I love that as foundation. I didn't use it today as foundation because I need to go purchase a new one. I ran out. Um, so that one was a favorite as well for sure, but I like that more for foundation. <laughs> I'm complicated. A new one that's been a new favorite is the ColourPop. The ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. These are a new favorite. I didn't wanna include it, even though I'm including it right now, just because I felt like, what's the rules here, okay? Does it have to be something that I've been using for a while? all year or, you know, I start to overthink it a little bit. That Creamy Concealer one by ColourPop is also definitely a new favorite. That one reminds me so much of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, just with a way lower price point, which is, it's one of those things where you just gotta try it and figure it out. So the next item is like a staple. It's the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder. No, Translucent Loose Setting Powder and Translucent. Um, this one, it's just like no matter what powder I try and I get obsessed with, I still always end up going back to this one. It's just like, it just works. Cause I was really using the Cody Airspun for a minute there. It just smells so toxic. <laughs> it just smells like straight chemicals. Oy. Yeah, I mean, I just always go back to this one. I always like to set my forehead after I do my brows. I don't know why, just that's just how I am. 
that's who I am as a person. When it came to eyebrows, I had a lot of different products I was constantly interchanging and it was strange. I couldn't figure me out. What was I doing? One of the biggest ones was the M Cosmetics Brow Cream. This I had the shade Taupe and Brunette and I would interchange between these all the time, which didn't make this easy. So I think Taupe now is one that I'm gonna use. I like this because it had a really small brush to it and it made, I'm sorry, like I can't zoom on this. So brush this right through. It's great if like you're in a hurry, you don't wanna necessarily spend forever filling in your eyebrows, but maybe your eyebrows do need some color, do need a little bit of filling in. Um, I, that's why I liked these. They were just so easy and it would stay put all day. Another brow product that I really liked was the M Cosmetics um, pencil. Now I liked this one because super fine tip pencil to it, which made application so easy and like light. Also the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Brow Pomade was another one I was using a lot. That one's nice if you do want like a really defined brow look or if you like a pomade. Um, versus a pencil or whatever. I like that one because it came with a brush for starters, which I love that. I like it when it comes with a brush. Also, the product just would stay put all day. I wore it all throughout summer and not once did my brows like smudged. It was just an all around good product. I would say as of recently, I've really been into the Benefit Brow Zings Pro Palette. Now it broke within the first couple of minutes of me using it, I'm not even kidding you. It just popped right off. It was kind of annoying, but this one's nice. So lately I've been using these three up here and sometimes the these as well. I've been kind of like playing around and trying to figure out what I like. I'm not much of a big powder person, but as of recently, I would say I definitely have been. So it really just depends your preferences. I'm using it right now because I don't know. When it came to eyeshadow palettes, you guys, I didn't really even have much of anything that was consistent at all. Um, and then I was trying to think, well, what would be something I would bring with me if I were like traveling or whatever? It's like, mm, I don't know. I just feel like with the eyeshadow palettes, this year was just out of control. There was too much. I did notice for me personally, I tried a lot of ColourPop palettes. With ColourPop, I never really ventured too much in their products before this year, I would say. A little bit, but not, maybe, maybe I'm lying. It's like hit or miss. Sometimes I would love the products. Sometimes it was like, mm. But their price point, like you can't be mad at it. I know a lot of you are not gonna like this answer that's about to come out of my mouth, but it's the truth. And anything but what I'm about to say would be a lie. And I'm not here to lie. As far as eyeshadows go, I didn't really have an eyeshadow palette that was like, yes, this is it. This is my go-to. I don't have that. I guess when I like really sat back and thought about it and looked at what I was using, there was nothing like really consistently that I seemed to be using over and over and over again. I only went out of town like a handful of times, like barely. And every time I did, I would just bring these palettes, the Visar or Viziar. I've heard both of the pronunciations, pronunciations, but um, YouTube has completely destroyed my confidence in how I pronounce anything. This one is called the Neutral Mats 01. It's always like a go-to. And I also like these because I could throw them in my bag and also use these for my brows as well, which I did a lot of the time. This one is called the Warm Mats 10. Um, it doesn't really look like I did much damage to it, but I've been using it a lot. I mean, these are gonna last me forever. The pigment is beautiful. They're great palettes um, for your kit if you're a working makeup artist. These I, I always use for like bridal, especially. So I was thinking about using this one today. For my eyeshadow primer, I don't really use eyeshadow primer. I mainly use uh, my foundation or concealer. So today I'm gonna use the Tarte Shape Tape, which wasn't the concealer I used. <laughs> this is why I don't like doing favorites videos. Cause sometimes I'm like, is it a favorite? I don't know, there's too much pressure. And I feel like someone's gonna call me out and be like, Bailey, you swore you loved this palette. And I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, I did like that palette, but I just felt like there was too many eyeshadow palettes this year. And it really made it hard to like sit and appreciate what, what was new, what was coming out, cause everything started looking the same. And I'm gonna use this shade right here. It's just a matte brown. So I'm putting this all over my lid up to my crease, right underneath my brow bone. I wonder what the trend for 2020 is going to be like. What was the trend this year, skin? I'm taking a blending brush with nothing on it and just going over the edge, just to blend and soften. Now I'm gonna grab this shade right here with my blending brush and then just lightly come in my crease. Then with like a smaller brush, this is a smudge brush, this darker shade, I'm gonna 
bring this at the lash line boom shakalaka then I like to bring some of that darker shade along the lower lash line so now I'm gonna dust off the loose powder. Now for my contour, this product I've used in almost every single video, it's the Smashbox Contour Palette. <laughs> now I always use this shade right here to contour. This is like the bronzer shade that you put on top. And then the highlight shade, I never use this highlight shade because it always turns gray on me. I just love this color right here. Um, when you purchase this product, it does come with a brush and I have a thousand of those brushes. But I love this color, it's perfect for me. I've been using this product off and on for so long. Smashbox came out with this contour palette before contouring became really big. I remember I was working at Sephora at the time and Smashbox was like the only brand that had a, an actual contour palette and they sold it in Macy's only. And I would go and I would go buy it and keep it like on the, the down low because I was working at Sephora and it's like, can't go to Macy's and buy that. But I would get it all the time and then they took it off the market and then when contouring became big again, they brought it back. No one was ready for contouring yet when this first came out. But it's the perfect shade for me. If they sold that contour color by itself, I would probably just buy that. I think MAC um, makes one, it's called Sculpt, which I also was using, not this year, but I think last year, nonstop. I don't know why, I just go back to the Smashbox one. Another product that was definitely a favorite is the Maybelline City Bronzer. This is number 200. I lost this for a little bit, but then I found it. I found like it. it has a like a smidge of shimmer to it. I was using it to contour because I didn't notice a shimmer, but I fi I like finally saw it one day and I was like, oh, it has shimmer. It's such a great bronzer. They have um, different shades depending on your skin tone, but I loved this bronzer and I'm so happy that we've been reunited. As far as blush goes, this one was one that I used a lot. It was Marc Jacobs um, Air Blush number 500. It's called Lush and Libido. I liked it because it was just like a pretty color and I couldn't go wrong with it. You could swirl all of these together to get a really pretty shade or just use half and half. Um, I like to swirl it all together and put it on. It was just like, it was just a pretty color. I there's, I just <clears throat> always went back to it. This is a very expensive favorites, isn't it? This year I kind of been on a no buy. I don't wanna say I fully succeeded in that because I did buy some new stuff, but for the most part, like I didn't buy new blush. I didn't buy eyeshadow palette. I did buy. I bought a Natasha Denona one. Okay, take that back. My goal has just been to use what I have. So like that Marc Jacobs blush has been in my drawer forever and I just decided to use it and I, I just stuck with it. The Smashbox thing, I mean, I've been using that for years. As far as mascara goes, I feel like you should know this answer, but maybe you don't, maybe you're new. Hi, Lash Princess, have you heard of it? Have you used it? Well, guess what? They came out with a waterproof this year, which if, I, if we had to have an award of one winning product for 2019, it would definitely be Essence Lash Princess, the waterproof. It's so different for everybody. Now, a lot of you guys say that, you know, you tried this and you love it. And then there's some of you who are like, I tried it and I absolutely hated it. Mascara is so weird because it's like the easiest part of the whole face, but it's so different for everybody. This one is so great. It's truly waterproof. It does not go anywhere. It makes my lashes so long, so thick. It does make them clumpy. So if you're looking for a lot of length and separation, I feel like this one isn't it. Like it doesn't, it's mainly for volume and some length. I've gotten a couple DMs from you guys asking me how I take this mascara off at night because you guys can't get it off. Well, you see, I don't really have a full answer because I can't seem to get it off either. <laughs> I've used the damn Lancome um, eye makeup remover. That one takes it off, but not really. It's still on my lashes. Um, I haven't found a really good makeup remover that removes this, like completely removes it. So if you have a really good eye, a true like waterproof eye makeup remover, I am all ears because baby, I can't get this off some days. Now, as far as lashes go, I think in almost every single video, I used Bold Face Makeup. One of their last lashes, it was either Bold Face Makeup 
or it was Ardell. And if it wasn't Ardell, then it was Kiss. Those are like the ones, top three, that I'm always interchanging. Bold Face Makeup makes the most beautiful lashes. And I like that they're a flexible, thin band. They're not thick. I hate a thick band on my lashes. I like them to be flexible. I like them to move. I don't want to feel like I'm wearing an eyelash. These ones are called Sassy Since Birth, and I wore them a lot throughout the year. Um, my favorite lash glue is Duo. They came out with this two-in-one, which this end is a black lash glue, and then this one is the original clear. So the black is great if you did like winged liner or black smoky eye. Using this one will create like a just a black glue so you can't see it, whereas this one, it shows up white and then it will dry clear, but sometimes you could see the glue, the residue on a dark eye. I'm gonna use the white side today. I think this glue is actually pretty genius and I don't know why it took so long for someone to think of this. It's like, duh, two in one, sign me up. So sen Sassy Sense Birth, that's the, the style of lash I'm putting on. These ones are nice. I liked these ones. I wore them a lot. They were just like a safe go-to. Now on my days off, I really don't even wear lashes. I just do mascara and I will wear my Lash Princess and that's about it. Unless I'm going somewhere nice, but I've just kind of like stopped wearing lashes all the time. Now, as far as highlight goes, this one's tricky because I mainly always use this one. It's the Hourglass Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. Now I've had this for like a hundred years, okay? Look, it's a trio. It was a holiday exclusive. This was years ago. I'm talking years ago. They don't have this anymore, but they do sell these separately. And I mainly always mix these two. I feel like this one is shows up kind of funky on me. So I always use these two. Another favorite as of recently, I would say within the last couple of months, is the Ofra and Madison Miller highlighter and it's called Sea Shimmer. This one I've been using a lot. It's very gorgeous. Let's use this one since you can get it, but this one is super pretty. I like to take my sponge and just go over the highlight just to blend it into the skin a little bit more like I got way too much. <laughs> so just take your sponge and push it into the skin. But it's pretty, I love that one. Eww! Eww! Then take a small brush with this highlight and pop it right in here. Beautiful. So as far as lips go, when it comes to lip liner, there's only two different lip liners I use. The Makeup Forever Artist Color Lip Pencil or MAC. Makeup Forever Artist Color Lip Pencils are fantastic. They blend so easily. If you remember, I think it was the year last year, I think it was, I was using these to like contour my face. I was obsessed. I kind of stopped because I just go through, I, you know, I don't know. But I use these as lip liners all the damn time. They're great and they have a great selection of different nudes, which I love. And then when it comes to MAC, they're just like a safe lip liner for me. I love Oak. Oak is like always a go-to. They are not waterproof, so it's like the biggest point of difference. Today I'm gonna use Oak. As far as lip color goes, Huda Beauty Liquid Lipstick in Bikini Babe is like, I wore this. I don't even know how many times I should have counted, damn it. But this is like my go-to for a nude lipstick that's gonna stay put all day and like one that I can easily throw on and I know I, I'm gonna like it. I always have this in my bag. I just like this color a lot on me. It's like the perfect nude, everyday nude. I just like this color. It's just perfect for me. It's like we're meant to be. And then lastly, for lip products, I have the Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Cat Suit, and this is called Caught You Bare Naked. I wore this one a lot as well, and this one I would kind of carry with me in my bag as well. I love this color. It's just like this perfect jizzy nude. Bare naked and I just can't take it. I gotta whiten my teeth. Does anybody have any recommendations for teeth whitener? Crest white strips? Should I do that? Those kind of hurt my teeth though. Anyhow, so this is the finished look that I created. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you wanna wear it? Let me know down below. I like this, I feel cute. Anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this video was kind of helpful if you were curious as to what some of my favorite products are for from this last year. I'm sorry I didn't have like a shit ton to be quite frank with you. Shout out to you, Frank. This year just wasn't it. <laughs>
this year was rough, wasn't it? Like, what the fuck? I'm so glad we made it, okay? I feel like I need to do a completely separate video as far as brushes go. Brushes is a whole nother game, baby, okay? You think I'm bad with concealer? You should see how I am with brushes. I wanna do a favorites video of stuff that's not beauty related, which um, I wanted to do and sprinkle it in earlier this year, but now the last couple of days really messed me up. I just haven't been feeling my best. So it kind of set me back a lot, which is a bummer. You know, use what you got. I think that's the takeaway here. Um, you probably already have some cool ass shit. You don't need to buy new shit. Also, I just wanna say a big thank you to you guys. 2019 has been such a crazy year. It's been a crazy year, but here on my YouTube, it's been so fun hanging out with you guys. I appreciate you more than you know. I appreciate all of the love and support you constantly send my way. Um, I can't say thank you enough, and I'm excited to see what 2020 brings us. And I hope you have a special and wonderful holiday. And if you don't celebrate the holiday, I hope you have a special and wonderful week. Love you guys so much. Oh my God. I hope you have a wonderful day today. You make good choices and I'll be seeing you guys later. Bye.